I almost burnt the house down, but I did book the show. So I guess it was memorable. Hi Vogue, I'm Carly Kloss, and this is my life in looks. <sighs> I'm a little nervous. Look number one. Oh, this is a good place to start. This was Calvin Klein, September 2007. And it was the very same week that I started my freshman year of high school. So I started school on Monday and by Friday, I was in New York meeting with Francisco Costa, the designer of Calvin Klein at the time. And I really had never been to New York Fashion Week. I'd only been to New York maybe once at this point. I'm 15 years old and I remember when I got the phone call, I was standing on the corner of 35th and 7th with my mom. And we were like both like huddled around this tiny little cell phone. And my agent was like, Carly, you booked the exclusive. My mom and I just looked at each other like, we have no idea what that means, but this is, this is good, right? This is good. I remember stepping off this runway and feeling like something special had happened. And it was pretty much overnight I had a career because of this Calvin Klein runway show. Ooh, this one was one of my favorites that I had the privilege to walk in in an Alexander McQueen show. It was like a flood of memories coming back to me. So I remember moments before I was walking out on this runway show, it felt so special. I, I knew kind of what a privilege it was to be wearing this big dress and I was so excited to kind of get out there and be a part of this experience, this performance. You know, there was a big trash heap covered in black paint. And, and I said to Lee, I said, I'm so nervous. I really hope I don't ruin your show because I, I might trip. This dress kept getting caught under my heel. And he said, Carly, if you trip, own it. You own the dress, the dress does not own you. And that is something that I have carried with me forever and and we'll never forget him saying and I did I, I I tripped the dress got caught under my heel and I replayed his words in my head and I took the dress and I threw it out in a very dramatic way and it actually became imagery that became the campaign for that season meanwhile I was like worried I was going to ruin the show and it turned into a very special moment. But I had this Hannah Montana life as I like to explain it best of both worlds situation where I was like a total normal lame nerd in Missouri that I loved that part of my life just as much as kind of jet setting to Paris, had an apartment in New York as a 15, 16, 17 year old kid. Okay, what's next? Oh, I love this image. Okay, this was another whirlwind experience. This image went alongside a story called I Carly. This portrait was shot by Annie Leibovitz for September 2009. Very big deal. Because I was 15 years old when I started my career, all throughout kind of my teenage years, I would have my mom, my aunt, my grandmother, my English teacher, anybody come with me on these shoots. And I have my amazing high school teacher, Miss Brewster, who was like my partner in crime, jet setting to like Haute Couture Paris Fashion Week. And she would come with me and we both kind of would look at each other like, I can't believe we get to do this. Ms. Brewster is still very much in my life. She literally is staying with my family in St. Louis right now. So she's part of the fam. This was October 2009 for the spring summer 2010 runway show. If this runway show was today, it would feel as kind of brilliant and, and, and relevant. This is the last time I saw Lee in person and um, I remember just the feeling backstage of some sort of closure in some way that I that I certainly didn't understand at the time. And I did understand though how hard it was to walk in these shoes. Cause these are the armadillo shoes. People criticized my walk in like sneakers and much less in, in shoes like this. Next one. Oh, okay, this one was a Christian Dior Haute Couture runway show. One of the greatest privileges in my career was actually the relationship that I had with John Galliano when he was designing for the house of Christian Dior. John and I didn't exchange a ton of words during that period. I almost didn't want to ruin the the dream. I almost didn't want to like open my mouth and 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 worry that like if he actually knew me, like would he not like me? So I kind of just almost stayed this silent movie star 
on his runways and, and in his atelier and, and on set with him with Steven Meisel. And I loved that. I loved kind of getting lost in his characters. And so we had this just like kind of love affair of a, of a working relationship. My prom dress was also Dior. Oh yeah, that was actually a really fun week. I went to my high school prom on Friday and then the following Monday, I went to the Met Gala both wearing Dior. The relationship that I had with the house of Dior and still have to this day, I could not have dreamt of anybody more special to make my wedding dress. I also didn't think that I would have the privilege to wear a Dior couture wedding dress, not just for a fantasy photo shoot, but really for my real life. So that was, that was really special. Next one. Oh, I love this one. I was having the haircut. This was not just like a staged photo. I was actually having my hair chopped off and my hair was like such model hair. I had walked in a thousand runway shows at this point. And so it was all like dead ends and it needed a good chop. And so I was like, yeah, of course I'll chop off my hair for Vogue, of course. And I'm glad I did because this was that kind of a turning moment, I think in my career. Anna wanted me to keep it a secret which I get, she wanted the big reveal to be in January Vogue. But the problem was that this photograph was taken in October and I think like the next week after the shoot, I was walking in the Victoria's Secret fashion show. So I tried my best. I had like a ton of extensions put into my hair to hide my bob, but the secret was out. Okay, next look. Oh my God, okay, there we go. So this was a Victoria's Secret show where I had short hair. I loved this look. This was Victoria's Secret 2013. I remember every time I put it on though, like a thousand beads fell off. <laughs> so they were like constantly just sewing more little sequins on here. I first walked in a Victoria's Secret show uh, in 2011 after I had graduated high school, which was so funny because I think that was many years into my runway career, but it was the first time that my friends back home had seen me on a runway and it's very cool. Okay, next page. Oh, oh my gosh, I love this was, <gasps> this was everything. September Vogue, I got to be on the cover. Being on a Vogue cover is like winning the Super Bowl. Being on a September Vogue cover is like, you won a Nobel Prize as a model. Like it doesn't get any better than that. And so I had this incredible privilege of being on the September Vogue cover with Cara Delevingne and Joan Smalls. And this was right at the time that Instagram was kind of taking the world by storm and transforming the fashion industry and what it meant to be a model because you could be more than just a face in a, a picture in Vogue, but you were actually becoming more and more known as like who you are. So this was like a turning point in the world and certainly in my career. Okay, next page. <laughs> okay, I was on my way to class at NYU. I'm like never trying to be a cool girl. I'm just like living my life clearly in like jeans and a sweatshirt going to, to school in sandals. What was I thinking? I don't know. I feel so lucky that Cindy Crawford and Christy Turlington and Naomi and so many others, Natalia Valdianova and Dotson Crows. I mean, so many amazing models that have been in my life personally and professionally that I have gotten to learn from, especially in new chapters in my life as a, as a mom. And they have, um, been, been really, really supportive in my life through every step. Christy Turlington did encourage me to go to NYU and she wrote my letter of recommendation. So very, very fortunate. Aha, this was a Aliyah show. Actually, this was the last time that I saw Azadine. The first time that I met Azadine Aliyah was in 2011 and being able to be in his atelier surrounded by these like mountains of fabric. And most of all, just like when you're with somebody so brilliant and so iconic, you know, he had shaped the course of, of, of fashion. Oh boy, okay, yes. This was the Met Gala that I think I broke the internet, but not in a good way. I still get trolled about this look where I was looking camp straight in the eye and I still get, rightfully get trolled. I'll, I'll, I'll accept it. Honestly, I, I, I deserved that one. This was May 2019, and this was for the Met Gala that was Camp Notes on Fashion, and this was a design 
created by Dapper Dan for Gucci. I met Dapper Dan actually through an episode of Project Runway, which I was hosting at the time, and I did a challenge in his studio in Harlem, and he and I really hit it off, and, and I think he offered to design my dress. Okay, next one. Oh, this was Project Runway. I am wearing a full Tom Brown look. Still have it. I had so much fun on Project Runway, especially with Nina Garcia and Brandon Maxwell, Elaine Welteroth, Christian Siriano. And it was so fun to have a designer like Tom Brown on the show and to be kind of working with kind of this next generation of talent. Vogue World, of course. This outfit I loved. This was a Rick Owens look. I remember the song that was playing was, um, was it Vogue? Yeah, it was Vogue, of course, duh. Vogue was playing at Vogue World, it was very appropriate. And I think I literally like pretended like I knew how to Vogue. It was like a reflex, like I should not have done it because I don't know how to Vogue. But you know, couldn't help myself. Okay. Ah, oh my gosh. This was when I was very pregnant at the Met Gala. And this is a look designed by Jonathan Anderson for Loewe. And I loved this dress. I love this dress. This whole just idea of a Met Gala look, which I learned my lesson to take to really like do my homework and do it right. Walking a red carpet is intimidating always, but I don't know, I felt like kind of vulnerable. I was eight months pregnant here and I had somehow kept my pregnancy secret. So this was the first like unveil. And during the pandemic um, was when I had my first son and I didn't see anybody. So to actually like see my friends and share this exciting good news in person and, and be able to like see their reactions was really special. So this night was, oh, a night I will never forget. Last but not least, I can't imagine what it's gonna be. Oh, this was a Sarah Burton for Alexander McQueen look for the Caring Foundation. I love these pants so much. You can't really tell it by the picture, but the shoes are in the pants. And so it's like these like endless stilt legs. I love a pantsuit. It makes me feel very like, Boss lady, I like it. Being back to work after having two little babies both makes me appreciate my job and, and just the magic that I get to be a part of on set. But also I love going home to my little guys for my real life. I feel very lucky. I like my glamorous life and my less glamorous life. I wrote the quote that Lee McQueen said to me, you wear the dress, the dress does not wear you. Okay, Vogue, thank you so much for having me. This has been my life and looks so far, and I can't wait to see what the next pages will look like.